Boom. I'm a talking square, but I'm a square VTuber. 3D is out, 2D is out. We're returning to basic form VTubing. All right, yeah, hard cut. Hard cut from the roleplay to some actual knowledge drop, okay? So, you know, my, my character, it's actually a live 2D model because I can like wink. I, I actually put this into live 2D, but it is actually pretty expressive because of all the filters I added onto it, right? It's got like a little animated bounce. It has like a little talk marker. So you can technically do this with any source, with any OBS source. Um, and I'm going to show you how to use this on anything. It's actually a really interesting um, trick. You're going to need um, OBS image reaction, this plugin, which actually lets you add reactive images to OBS. Scale to sound, uh, this adds the bouncing effect that you see. And the move plugin, which is just actually the most goaded plugin of all time. Uh, the first thing you're going to do, I'm going to use this with an image reaction first, right? So. Uh, I'm going to right click the scene, click add, image reaction, right? And in this box, you can add two images, one for when the image is silent and one when the image detects sound. Okay. And I actually already prepared one. So this, this is just a static image. Look, see no bottom. There's nothing. It's, it's live 2D. But um, I actually loaded up with two different images here. Uh, and if I set the audio source to my mic, oh, it actually detects my mic. Cool. Um, and set the reaction threshold up, the mouth opens when I talk. The, the image switches to the other image when I talk. And you want to adjust the threshold so it like feels natural. This is pretty um, flat, you know, not very expressive. The other thing that I'm not showing off here is that the reactive image can be a GIF. Um, it could be like a moving image in the second one. So that's another way to make it more expressive. But I really want to show you what you can do with just a static image, okay? So I'm going to move the threshold lower. Keep it like that. And then I'm going to um, add a filter. Uh, I'm gonna add a scale to sound filter. And what this does, this adds like bounce movement to the image every time there's audio. So I set the audio source to my mic and look, it's already bouncing, right? Already that's like looking way more animated. I wanna get it to bounce like up and down. I don't want it like zooming in. You can adjust these parameters here to kind of see how much it bounces. So if I put the minimum size to zero, it gets really small. Then every time I talk, I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm up in your face. Is this specifically using microphone input? Only not a camera. You can use any audio source. I could map this to like desktop audio source. Yeah, so I'm, I'm linking it to this, to this stream now. And you can see it's, it's actually move, reacting to the audio. Does the test subject know what you're doing? They'll they'll find out. Um, okay, so there are a lot of parameters here you can adjust to, to like adjust the bounce to your liking. But the one I'm going to use right now is these scale width and scale height options. So the one I want to check first is I want to uncheck scale width and keep scale height. So now it's bouncing like more up and down. You know that this is more of the bounce that I want. But I I don't want it like bouncing from the center. So I'm going to change the Y positional alignment to bottom. So it bounces from the bottom. See, now, now this is more like an anime bounce. You can even make it really exaggerated. So if I put the minimum size all the way down, it's like I only appear if I talk. Ah! But now I want a little bit of like a squish effect too. Uh, I did watch a video about animation fundamentals. There's something called squash and squish. And I think I kind of just ran into it, you know, but it's exactly the vibe I'm going for. So now to get a squish effect, I'm going to add a second scale to sound filter. I'm going to make it scale width instead of scale height. And then I'm going to do inverse scaling, right? So when I, once I turn on inverse scaling, you can see I already have this bounce. And if I like modify the minimum size, it can, um, you know, I can get squished even more when I talk, but this gives it a much more animated effect. Squash and stretch. Sorry, that's it. Squash and stretch. And look, this is just like two static images. This is all, this looks pretty expressive. So I'm going to add one more thing, but I have this image that um, I can link out again in the description below. So I also have this thing, this talk marker. I was looking for what it was called in anime for so long. It's called Manpu, M-A-M-P-U. 
if ever you need to find out. And so I wanted this thing to kind of show up to add one more layer of expression to indicate when I'm talking. What I'm gonna do, and actually what I'm gonna do here is I'm really squished down. So I'm gonna adjust my guy first really quick. Yeah, there, there we go. That, that looks a, a little more reasonable. And now I only want this thing to show up when I'm talking. So this is when I'm gonna use the move filter. Okay, so move the move filter comes with visual move filters and audio move filters. And to use the audio move filters, I'm gonna click these three dots in mic in my mic channel, go to filter, and you can now you can add audio filters to your sound channels. So I'm gonna right click and click add audio move. This will show up after you install the move plugin. And what this does, it gives you a bunch of different uh, options to change things based on audio levels. So I'm gonna, this. there's transform, there's like settings, uh, source visibility, filter enable. I'm gonna keep it simple and just do source visibility, which means this will show and hide a source based on audio levels. And so the scene that I want to affect is scene two here. And the source is called uh, image, is the image source. And the easing, and let's see, meter type magnitude. I actually don't know. I, I just play around with all these. There's a there's a channel that I've been catching up on lately called, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Gale. Gale level. They do incredible. They, they're actually grinding out a ton of really good tutorials. I need to give them a shout out. Um, but they have a really good video on all the audio filters and they go through all of this stuff. But I just, exper I just experiment with it. Okay, so I'm going to leave it on magnitude. Uh, I'm going to put the threshold up. And threshold action, I'm going to set it to enable over and disable under. So what that means is when it's over the threshold, it's going to show the image. And when it's under the threshold, it's going to hide it. So now it's hidden. But if I adjust the threshold, I think somewhere, maybe, okay, maybe it needs to be like peak sample, peak true, input, okay. Uh, Okay, so I have it on input peak sample. So that's what works for me. You might need to find what works for you, but I have it on input peak sample with, I, I've just messed around with the threshold and now it only shows up when I talk. So now I have this talk marker that only shows up when I talk. But there's one more thing I actually wanna add here because there's one thing about this that really bugs me, which is the talk marker, I kinda of want it to move with my model. I kinda of want it to squash and stretch with my model. Like I can get super squished and it's not gonna squish with me. And I, I, and I really want it to squish with me, actually. I, I really want it to like move with the model to add that extra layer of expression. So how am I gonna do that? Well, I'm actually going to group these two sources together, the talk marker and the model. Uh, right click both, so I select both of them, right click, go to group selected items, and I'm gonna call this the model group. I should, I should name these. Okay. And then I'm going to take my scale to sound filters and put them in the group. You can put filters into groups, which is, which is a, actually an amazing technique that you can do to like affect multiple things at once. And instead of copying each indiv individual one over and over, I'm going to right click my image reaction and go to copy filters. So it just copies all the filters I set to image reaction and then paste filters. So it saves all my settings and it saves all the filters I had there. Paste filters, okay? And this is a weird thing with scale to sound, which is like, you if it makes your image disappear, you have to just go in and like readjust the threshold. Like, I don't know why it does this, but you just gotta do that. Yep. See, I'm back for both. And now I can go back to my image reaction and just disable these two filters because I don't need them anymore. I can just delete them actually from my base image reaction because now I have scale the sound on the model group, you can, you can kind of tell that the talk marker now moves with my model. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little more exaggerated so it's easier to see. Yeah, see, now the talk marker like scales with me. You, if you don't care about the talk marker scaling or don't have a talk marker, it doesn't matter. You can just do it to a source. But uh, let me show you another advantage to having it in a group actually, is now anything in this folder will, squash and stretch to your voice, right? So you can put anything in this folder and it will have the same reaction. So check this out. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna add just a random color source, just like a big 
block, just a rectangular block. I'm mean, actually a square block. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna like put it into this folder. Boom. I'm a talking square, but I'm a square VTuber. 3D is out. 2D is out. It's all about basic forms. We're returning to basic form VTubing. Or I can just drag in pictures. Now I'm Benjamin Franklin, and, and he's and he's moving around like he's a VTuber. You know, you know, could do this. Now, uh, now I'm a live Dr. Han reaction VTuber. You know, live funny image VTuber. Now I am the freedom of speech guy. Now I'm a controversial opinion VTuber. So easy. Now let's get even crazier with this. Okay, let's get even crazier with this. I'm gonna, I need to hide this really quick. I can, I can also just add any OBS source to this folder and it will, all the filters will apply to it. So now I am a VTuber that is the desktop capture of the desktop in which I'm making this VTuber. All right, so now I can, I can just do a random window capture. And now I'm the twitch.tv VTuber. I'm, a, I'm the entire Twitch website, you know? I'm talking as the entire Twitch website avatar. And so you can even like capture your games and do this, right? So this works with any source in OBS. Is that, are, are you getting it? Like, you can stick any OBS source under this folder and you can animate it like this. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. We do a lot of interactive stream concepts on my Twitch. And if this video helped your stream, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more.